We are now ready to prepare this model for mold making. Our first step is to glue it down to a suitable box or cardboard surface for making the mold. Be generous with your application of glue as you do not want the model moving during the mold making process. This would damage the latex rubber and cause you to have to start over again. Make sure that the model is placed in the center of the box, press down firmly, and allow the glue to dry. After the glue is dried, you can fold up the corners of your cardboard to create a little wall that will act as an edge of the latex rubber mold and also for holding the shell in place. You do not have to get fancy here. Whatever works for you will work and that is what you go with. Make sure that your corners are fastened securely as you do not want your mold box falling apart during the mold making process. Allow at least a one to two inch gap between the edge of the box and the edge of your model. You need to be able to get in and coat the entire model with rubber without having to fight with the edge of the mold box. At this point, we want to spend some time patching any little defects in the surface of our model. Modeling clay is a good medium here. It will fill all the tiny little holes. It's easy to work with and will not interact with the latex in any way. You just need to be sure that when you're applying your latex, that if you're dealing with a large gap, you don't press or force any latex into the defect in the casting. Use an oil-based clay on your model for patching. It will not interact with the latex and it will not dry out on you during the molding process. Go over your model carefully and make sure you fill all defects. Take the time to do a good job here and it will reward you with beautiful castings as an outcome. As in the first part of this mold making video, we used shellac cut with denatured alcohol to seal our models for mold making. This will ensure that the mold will release easily from the model and give you a beautiful casting surface. Remember to cut your shellac 50-50 with denatured alcohol. Mix it well and begin application. As you are brushing the shellac onto the model, be careful to watch for any pooling of the shellac on the surface. Any place that this happens, use your brush to brush it out so that there is just a thin coating. Pooling of the shellac on the surface of the casting will give you a loss of detail in the casting in the mold making process. It is also important when you're applying your shellac to coat the entire surface of the box as well. This will make for an easier release of the latex from the box during the demolding process. The shellac also acts to harden up the patches that you have done on your model. This will ensure that during the brushing on of the latex you don't indent into any of the uh, clay patches. Allow each coat of shellac that you apply to dry thoroughly. After you've applied two coats of shellac to the model and the box, you'll be ready to begin the molding process.
Prior to applying the latex to the model, the first step you should take with your brush is to keep a cup of soapy water around. This will ensure that the latex will not gum up on the brush during the brushing on process. Make sure you get rid of any excess soap and then dip your brush in your latex and begin application. As this is your print coat, which is the primary coat which captures all the detail of the model, it should be brushed on very thinly and allowed to dry completely. During this, make sure that you do not puddle any latex in the little cracks and crevices in the model. This has to go on nice and thin and will build up and fill in all those cracks and crevices during the molding process. Again, as you apply your first coat of latex to the model, make sure you eliminate any buildups of the latex and all the cracks and crevices on the model. You need to work this away and let it dry in a thin coat for the first coat so that it gives you a really good detailed surface of the model in your rubber mold. As you're applying the latex to the gap where the model joins onto the cardboard, do not be concerned about any latex getting underneath. During the demolding process and the cleaning up and preparation of the mold, you will trim this away with an X-Acto knife. Make sure you coat the side walls of the mold box as this will act as a place for the shell to grip onto. You can be more generous with your application of latex to the side walls of the model. There is no detail here to capture, so having a little excessive buildup will not hurt you. It may take a little longer to dry than the rest of the rubber, but in the long run you want a good thickness on the side walls of the box.
As we begin application of our second coat of latex, you can see that the first coat has turned translucent. As your coats of latex build up on the model, it will eventually turn the entire piece to an off yellow color with, as it builds up in thickness. We are looking for an ultimate thickness here of about an eighth of an inch, which should take somewhere around 12 coats of rubber in application. As you can see, as our number of layers of rubber increase, we begin to fill in the detail on the surface of the model. We are now ready to begin the process of making our shell for our model. The first step is to apply a coat of Vaseline or petroleum jelly to all of the latex. Even though the plaster will not stick to the latex, this just makes for an easier release the first time out. It is always a good idea when you're working with plaster bandages to pre-kit out your rolls of plaster bandages. This will make your life much easier when you have the bandages cut to a workable length for your application.
We are now ready to begin application of the plaster bandages to the back of the latex mold. I like to work with two to three layers of bandages at a time. I usually like to start work with the edge of the mold at the beginning of my shell making process. Make sure as you put down your layers of plaster bandages that there are no air bubbles underneath. Work them down using your fingertips carefully and make sure that again that there are no air bubbles or gaps between the plaster bandage and the rubber mold. Using these plaster bandages for your shell making will provide you with a lightweight, incredibly strong shell that will last through countless reproductions of your model. After the plaster bandages have been allowed to dry completely, you now may remove your shell from the back of the mold. Our next step is to remove the latex rubber from the actual model and the mold box. Gently separate the rubber from the cardboard mold box. If you've applied a thorough coating of shellac to the mold box, this should not be too difficult. Take your time and work the rubber away nice and slowly. 
loosen up the latex all the way around the edges of the mold box before you actually try and peel it off the model. Once all the edges are released, you can then peel the latex off the model. Be aware of the fact that there might be a little drips of latex that have caught underneath the model, so take it off very carefully. To ease in your use of your mold, a good idea here is to create a little mark where the mold shell locks into the rubber. If you do this with a permanent marker, you'll never have a problem lining up your rubber with your mold shell. Our final step in getting our mold rubber ready for use is to trim away any of the excess rubber that slipped underneath during the mold making process. Use a sharp X-Acto blade for this. Work slowly. As you stretch out the strips of latex away from the actual mold, it will cut very easily. Once again, we'll be using plaster as our medium for casting into the mold. Pour a little plaster in and then use your hand to work it over the surface of the latex rubber mold. This will ensure that you capture all the detail on the surface of the casting. After you've worked over the surface of the casting, you may top off the mold to a nice level point. A little shaking of the mold from side to side will help to self-level the plaster. We are now ready to demold our plaster casting from our latex rubber mold. 
Again, because this is a shelled mold, your first step is to remove the plaster shell. This will make it easy for you to peel the latex off of the plaster casting. Again, work it carefully and slowly. You do not want to damage your plaster casting in the demolding process. Work your way around the edges. After you've loosened up the latex rubber mold, it should peel off quite easily. We are now ready to apply our final finish to our casting. We start off with a gray lacquer primer which is an excellent sealer for plaster and an excellent base coat for any following finishes that you will apply. We use an automotive based lacquer primer because it builds very quickly and is readily available for most auto supply stores. When you are spraying on this base color you should spray from a distance of about 12 inches away. After we have applied the lacquer we are now ready to apply our stone fleck. Again, this is readily available for most hardware stores and makes for an interesting finish variation on our product. Remember to spray from a distance of 12 inches away and to not have too much buildup in any one area. Our final spray coat is of a clear lacquer material that will act as a sealer for the stone fleck underneath. This will guarantee that the finish on your casting will have a long life. Thank you.